Hello, it is Sunday, April 3rd, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Sunday puzzle today, so a long one, so I'll try and keep I'll try and keep this uh, preamble on the short side. So quickly, I will thank a few people uh, for bringing us this edition of the Daily Solve. Thank you to Stace Spicy, Jake Rodkin, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And they're helping make this series sustainable, a sustainable part of my daily work, which I really do appreciate. And if you'd like to join their ranks as a benefactor and get access to the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And of course, if you contribute to the Patreon campaign at any level, you get the um, full suite of full array of bonus video solves. And a couple more have gone up there in the in the past two days, the um, most recent mini puzzle weekly speed solve, as well as the most recent boss words themeless league competition puzzle, which um, again, I'm pretty pleased about how I did on that one. <laughs> thankfully. So, um, so that was good. And, um, more going up soon. I'm, I'm, I've seen, I have looked in the daily solve discord chat server, by the way, of course, if you contribute to the Patreon campaign, you also get an extra channel in there, but beyond that, the rest of the, uh, daily solve discord is free for anybody to join. And, uh, in the constructors corner channel, I've noticed that a number of puzzles have been promoted to the constructors corner complete channel, which means they're ready for public consumption which means you can play and enjoy them if you'd like, but also I'm going to be doing that on video soon for the Patreon. All right, all that said, let's get on to the puzzle. This is, of course, a Sunday puzzle, so it is titled, and it is in fact titled Soft Options. No idea what that means. And it was constructed by Byron Walden, who's a very experienced New York Times crossword constructor, over 100 puzzles to his name in the New York Times. And this puzzle, of course, was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. All right, this big grid, I never, never ceases to intimidate me, even though I know it probably won't be as difficult as yesterday's puzzle, which was, I thought, a pretty tricky puzzle. Uh, it is just so big, it always takes the longest. Okay, sorry, what did this say? Hearten. Um, encourage or uplift. I mean, I, I suppose uplift would fit, but I don't, uh, it's not obvious enough without some crosses. And it flopped. Not sure. Attack with snowballs, say. That feels like pelt to me. Pelt is a verb often associated with snowball throwing. Don't give up is try, perhaps. We're going to do that today for the next 45 minutes, probably. Uh, reveals could be let's on. Let's check some of these. Sweeping works could be epics, a work of sweeping scope. Blank light. Not sure offhand, but let's now we have some crosses here. Let's check the uh, these clues. Clearer in hindsight. Ah, clearer in hindsight. So the question mark indicates a bit of pun or wordplay. And I'm wondering if what this means is perhaps a windshield wiper or something like that. It's uh, a rear window wiper. It's something that clears something and it's in hindsight. Maybe it's behind you. Um, or maybe it's simply rear wiper. That might work. What about this? Capote nickname. Yes, so this if this is Truman Capote, uh, the writer, his nickname was True. So there we go. And heading for commonly sought info. Heading. So I wonder if this means a heading at the top of a page. And then car part the Brits call a wing. And sang Hosanna, so sang Hosanna's too. Hosanna in the highest, praised. And and it flopped. What is this? Is this sort of fift? Oh, fender, fender, the wing of a car, the fender of a car. So I, I, this, I suppose that means this is sort of poof, pift, and it flopped. So you're, eh, oh well, didn't work out, pift. Can't really do that well on the mic. I'm, I'm, I'm wary of putting too much air towards the mic because it that tends to, pop. Okay, heading for commonly sought info. Oh, FAQs, frequently asked questions. There we go. I, that's funny. I thought of FAQ earlier, but I didn't put it in because I didn't, it didn't occur to me that it would have the S. It would be pluralized. But yeah, I suppose that is, that is common enough. Apollo 11 landing spot. Oh, the sea of tranquility on the moon, right? Sea of tranquility. I wonder if that's the first time this has appeared in the New York Times crossword. I wouldn't be surprised. Often these long answers um, 
often these long answers of phrases will be debuts because they're so many things have to align in order for this particular phrase to fit well in the grid. Oh, pilot light, I see, as in a, a boiler or something like that. Okay, flying terrors of myth, of myth, rocks, the big birds that could carry an elephant, according to, I think, Arabian myth. Flexible cutters, wire something. Items used by barkeepers, barbecuers, and blacksmith, BBB. Um, what would these people all use? Tongs? No. Hmm, not sure. This is almost complete, though. What is this word? Helps. Aids. There we go. And Kid Cutie or Lil Baby, e.g. Are they rappers, I'm guessing? And of course, because this is an or clue, we're only referring to either one of them. So it's not plural, even though we've listed two people. Here we have a semicircular recess in a church, most commonly. It could be an apse. And an enhanced tape format released in 1987. Enhanced tape format. Um, I'm not sure. Hopefully I'll get that with some crosses. What is this? Oh, this is that bank keepers, whatever, <laughs> bank keepers, barkeeper, banker thing, whatever it was. Not bankers, barbecuers and blacksmiths. Okay. Sledge wedge, e.g. These are tools. And here's a case where we're listing things and it's plural because the etc. means we're, we're referring to all of these things. These are all tools, simple tools. Sports organization with the Pittsburgh Maulers and Philadelphia Stars. I'm not sure. I bet it'll end in L, though, for league. That's my guess. Quickly maturing security, for short. Probably a bill. Is it a T-bill, a treasury bill? Um, what about this? Cool shade. Sea blue. No, not sea blue. Ice blue. Ice blue. Cool as ice. And hearten. Lift up. How about that? That looks right. Having legs means lasting, metaphorically. You say, oh, that has legs. That's going to last. Oh, crossword header across. There we go. Indeed, the header under which this clue is present. Weakness could be frailty. And let's just check the crosses on that. Oh, so this was T-bill after all, treasury bill, I guess. And then misfortunes are ills that may befall you. A wackadoodle, I suppose, is a nut. So it's a bit of a slang term matching another slang term in the answer. And spewed forcefully geysered, as in a natural geyser. Okay. Enveloping atmospheres, auras. You might be enveloped by an aura, a uh, comforting or foreboding aura, perhaps, either of those. Oh, super, what is this? Super, enhanced tape format released in 1987. What is this? Super VHS? I'm not sure. I don't know. Parts of some brackets. Oh, this is probably sports related, so probably seeds. And a spree could be referred to as a tear. You're going on a spree. You're going on a tear. Entertainers with bright futures. Bright looks like star. Star material, maybe? I'm not sure. What about this? Remove cargo from... Oh. This S is sort of interesting here. So perhaps we're using RA. We're using the... Uh, not the S pluralization, but the E pluralization here, the AE, to indicate plural of aura, because remove cargo from, if there if there were an S on the end, we'd want this to be removes a cargo from. So perhaps it's unlaid. I think we had laid in a crossword recently, and some people were thrown by that. It's obviously less commonly used these days than load. So look out for that, I suppose. Oh, I mean, this may not be the answer, but it, it fits. So let's let's try some crosses. Experience. Undergo, perhaps. You undergo an experience. You have it. Music genre for Erica Badu and D'Angelo. Uh, Neo soul, maybe? Is that? Impends. Not sure. Oh, although nonfiction films could be docs, documentaries. And this in Spanish could be esta... It's probably over your head. It's probably over your head. 
and Carl the Sixteenth Gustav, uh, King of Sweden, beginning in 1973. So Gustav or Gustav? I think it's Gustav. Carl the Sixteenth Gustav, I believe. Soccer chant could be Ole Ole. And what about this? Oh, I didn't. I don't think I saw this. Many people find it intolerable. Lactose, lactose intolerance, of course. Oh, and a roof is probably over your head. Okay, fair enough. What about this? Oh, impends is nears. Gets nearer, it's impending. And then enter, oh, stars of tomorrow. Uh, so esto, that's why I didn't fill this in because I wasn't sure if it would be esta or esto for um, gender-wise. So anyway, here we have stars of tomorrow. There we go. Okay. A majority who's most, don't yet have a majority of the answers filled in this crossword. Up in the air is aloft, straightforward enough. Big tearjerker. Uh, I'm not sure. And what about this? Mic check noise. It could be tap tap. Turn aside is avert. And oh, a warehouse of facts with poet and blank in joint ownership. The devil's dictionary definition for imagination. Poet and liar, I would think. Uh, poet, <laughs> warehouse of facts with poet and liar in joint ownership. The devil's dictionary definition for imagination. That looks right. The Crucible setting. The Crucible was set in uh, Salem, uh, the Salem uh, Witch Trials. Sheepish. Oh, ovine. Okay, so here we have sheepish with a question mark. And a funny thing about the question mark meaning pun or wordplay is that very often what it means is that you actually sort of take the, take it more literally rather than less because sheepish really is a word that, well, I mean, it, it, yeah, I guess literally is maybe putting it not quite right, but we would think of sheepish as someone being shy or retiring, but uh, but this is almost saying, no, I'm, I'm speaking literally about actual sheep. So sheep are ovine in the same way that cows are bovine. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't know if, if a literal definition of sheep is, sheepish is like a sheep. Probably not. I think it really is more, I think the actual word sheepish refers strictly to the metaphorical meaning, but so obviously derived from sheep clearly, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Anyway, opposite of exo, um, endo. So you could have an exoskeleton or an endoskeleton, exo on the exterior and endo in the interior. A um, bit of a kit chat would be meow, I suppose. A cow, a cow, have cows on the brain. Um, have cats uh, speaking and swell. Oh, the, this is an endo, it's ento. Sorry, I always mix those up, endo and ento. Sorry about that. So Ento, and then Swell is Nito, and Edgar Rice Burroughs' novel with the... So Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote Tarzan, right? So the son of Tarzan, probably? Okay, Pope Pius Twelfth called it a holy thing, perhaps like nothing else. I don't know. That's very long. We'll have to, we'll have to wait until we see some clues. It's almost as... This is almost as long as an entire regular day crossword size, but not quite. Okay, I can do this. Hit me. I'm not sure. What about this? Some ten pointers in Greek Scrabble. Oh, <laughs> Zetas, I suppose. That's funny. So the Greek alphabet on Scrabble tiles. This, I suppose, I suppose in the Greek language that letter is just as uh, rare as its as its English language. Uh, vocabulary equivalent. Actress Amanda, Amanda Peet, certainly have heard of. And its motto is agriculture and commerce. This looks like state. I mean, it wouldn't be the State Department. That doesn't really make any sense. What? Uh, what is this? 1974 spoof with the tagline, would you buy a used secret from these men? So I've never seen this film, but I've seen its movie poster, Spies. Spelled, spelled this way, S-P-Y-S, um, unintuitively enough. So I think that's the answer. I can do this. Hit me. What is that? Reply? It doesn't seem right. Woe for a speeder. A radar trap. Someone speeding in a vehicle. And grads to be are seniors. Oh, I already. Okay, so maybe this is... Dilute something in a way. Add water. And the in a way means that 
this isn't a literal definition or synonym. So dilute something doesn't literally mean to add water. You could dilute it with something that isn't water. But the in a way means, well, this is this is sort of an example of that thing. You could say adding water in a way means to dilute something. So not prescription in brief. Not prescription in brief, I'm not sure. Prefix with futurism. You could have Afrofuturism. And bits of machinery cogs, maybe? Oh, I see. O OTC for over-the-counter. So a drug that can be bought without a prescription. Not prescription. A, a non-prescription medication. State of or state off... Oh, oh, maybe it's a particular state. Oh, I see. Uh, it must be a, a particular U.S. state, but I'm not sure which one. Cattle ranch identifier, probably a tag. Surgical instrument with thumb holes. Oh, oh, right. What is this called? Um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Let's keep going. Maker of the ring in the Lord of the Rings. Did Sauron make the ring? Sauron is the big, the big eye, or or maybe whoever owns the big eye. But so I assume that's who made the rings, or the ring, I guess. But there were more than one, I think. Anyway, um, that's my guess. I'm not very confident about that. So let's check the uh, crosses. Eve's third son was it Seth? Maybe. Battery parts. I feel as though I'm adding guesses onto guesses here. Let's let's see. Is there anything I can definitely get? Taking a bow at the symphony. Okay, well, sorry. This is it looks like taking a bow at the symphony, but we have the question mark meaning pun or wordplay. But I think what that question mark is indicating is that we should read bow differently. So instead of taking a bow, it's taking a bow. And I think what that refers to here is arco. So um that refers to a stringed instrument being bowed as opposed to, for instance, plucked. So, taking a bow at the symphony. I think that's probably what that means. Cattle ranch identifier. Oh, ear tag. Right. Don't cattle often have ear tags, I think. Talk like a pirate day outbursts. Ours, perhaps. Would this be spelled A-A-R? No, that doesn't look right at all. It must be A-R-R. -R. Oh, for, forceps. That's, what, that, that's the word I was trying to think of. Surgical instrument with thumb holes is a forceps. Uh, so, this must be ta spate, blah, state of Tennessee agriculture and commerce. There we go. Got a nice long answer in there. And what about this? Offensive football positions. Something else, maybe? I'm not sure. And what about this? Persuade with patter. Persuade with patter. So you, you, you're selling something with a spiel, a bit of patter. I think that's probably what that means. Eve's third son, battery parts, hands in slang. I don't know. Pause. I'm not sure. What's going on down here? Ruby of the Jackie Robinson story. Ruby D. And Joy who wrote Born Free. Uh, forgiving. Talent for discernment. A keen eye? Seems plausible. So what was this? Persuade with patter. Oh, Fast talk? He fast talked to you. He persuaded you with patter, perhaps? Forgiving. A lenient, of course. There we go. I probably could have gotten that more quickly. Dormer section. So a dormer conversion, at least that's a phrase used here in the UK, is a, is a type of loft conversion that uh, you, can, you can construct within the eaves of a house. Is that what this is referring to? Dormer section. I don't think so. Uh, hmm. What about this? Waif. Uh, some, a sort of slender person, willowy person. Is that what that would be? And blank Blinken. <laughs> blank Blinken. Biden Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. And Scottish negative could be nay. And Latin phrase meaning based on forecasts. I'm not sure. What about this? Kinds of, sorry, kids of boomers, Generation X, um, commonly. 
what is this? And what is this? Dish made from durum, say. So pasta is made from durum wheat. Most dry pasta is anyway. Uh, and here we have dormer section. Is this pine? I'm not sure I understand exactly. Or pane? Like a window pane, maybe? Sort of suspect that's what it is. And then Joy, who wrote Born Free. Looks like Addison? Adamson, probably. Oh, oh right. Yes, Gammon. So, um, actually, I'm not sure if this is Gammon or Gammon, but it refers to, a, you know, a child, a sort of, I don't know, scamp. Maybe I think it has a bit of the um, suggestion of... Uh, you know, a little, a little imp or rascal, maybe not, not as, maybe not as um, charged as imp. But so this does look like Adamson, and then this looks like Exante. I, uh, as you probably know if you've seen the series, my Latin is not particularly strong, so I'm just going to have to assume that is correct. I suspect it is. So what is this? Offensive football positions. I don't know. It really looks like wipeouts to me, but that doesn't make any sense. I don't think in this context. So what about this? Blank 3000, half of the hip-hop duo, Outcast Andre 3000. And then here we have 1980s White House nickname. Ron for Ronald Reagan, is it as straightforward as that? Little bump could be a nodule. And about 98% of the human genome. Is it DNA something? What sort of DNA? One star, typically. A bad rating, I would think. Bad rating. And then, although this doesn't look... Big... T oh, Sobfest. Oh, it is Gustav. Oh, after all that, Carl 16th Gustav. Not Gustav. Sorry about that. After I made a point of thinking about it, I probably shouldn't have typed that in. Probably should have just left it blank. That was enough. Anyway, a big tearjerker film, for instance, could be a Sobfest. Sitcom planet of the 70s and 80s. I think this is Orc from the Robin Williams sitcom, Mork and Mindy. And then here we have Rara Avis, a rare bird, literally. Okay. Inscribed with some ancient characters, runic probably, inscribed with runes. Okay, so what is this? About 98% of the human genome. This will be some wacky fact probably, um, but I'm not sure offhand. Curve could be a bend. Metaphor from an hourglass. Sand something? Oh, junk. Is it junk DNA? Is most of the human genome sort of irrelevant and there's just 2% that's particularly valuable? That I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. I don't know much about genetics, but that seems like the kind of thing that you hear all the time. Oh, describing the 32 Downs image. And then 32 Down is what Pope Pius XII called a holy thing, perhaps like nothing else. Interesting. Okay. Um... What can we what can we look for here? Went under. Probably ends in a D. Wide outs. That looks more likely than wade outs or woed outs or wooed outs. Certainly, uh, yeah. Maybe the players are fanned out or spread out in a wide position. Let's see. Oh, the shroud of Turin. The shroud of Turin. Although the seed looks surprising. Let's delete that. So what is this? Oh, just ruined rather than runic. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I suppose runic doesn't necessarily mean it is inscribed. Yeah, okay. So describing the 32 Downs image. So the Shroud of Turin is said to have the impression of the face of Jesus in it. So what would this be? Describing? Oh, and it makes a cross. That's, that's clever as well. Um, anyway, Jesus what? Hmm, I'm not actually sure. Let's keep looking. Yankee Doodle has 16 of them. Versus, I suppose? Wow, that is more than I know, that's for sure. San oh, the Sands of Time. Metaphor for an hourglass, the Sands of Time. Okay, fair enough, yep. That's more straightforward than I was making it. Went under could be fail. The business went under, it failed. Word with fine or signature. Signature tune or a fine, or, or to fine tune something. So sometimes these word with clues can be sort of tricky because often you will you will be matching them in ways that produce different parts of speech. So fine tune is a verb, but signature tune is a noun. And sometimes that sometimes it can be hard to sort of put those next to each other in your mind when you don't already know the answer. 
So just think, remember to push your brain out of that, out of that uh, place. Animal life is fauna, as in flora and fauna, and C29 across. Have we, have we seen 29 across, in fact? No, we have not. With 52 down, Oscars category from 1963 to 2019. Oh, I think this is sound editing, actually. I, that was removed. And now there's just a single Oscar for best sound, I believe. Um, but I think there used to be two different sound categories, and I'm not sure if they, I'm not sure if they both, ex if, if they existed in parallel for all of that time, or if they sort of came and went, but I suspect that's what this one is. Anyway, take off the board could be erase, perhaps, erase from a chalkboard, for instance. And, oh, right, so what is this? Sets of something, items used by barkeepers, barbecuers, and blacksmith. Yeah, sets of looks pretty likely. So what is this? Odor fighting spray brand. And beat poet Cassidy. Oh, Neil Cassidy? Fixed look could be a stare. And a tyke is a child. Um, and performing well on could be acing, perhaps. I mean, that would be performing very well on. Uh, oh, so Otis Tongs. Oh, right. Okay, so what do each of these people use tongs for? So a barkeeper use, uses ice tongs. Barbecuers use tongs for the meat, and blacksmith uses right uses tongs to uh, um, keep the thing at arm's length. Okay, so that's yeah. I thought of tongs, and then I guess I just didn't think of sets of tongs. Okay, fair enough. Um, candy with two flavors in one box. I don't know. And a graceful bird, graceful bird. Blank Winans. 12-time uh, Grammy-winning uh, gospel artist CC, I believe. And does that help here? Intellectual movement. Oh, a school of thought. So it's not a particular intellectual movement. It's the concept of an intellectual movement, any any school of thought. But Oh, it, oh I see. A tyke is a wean. There we go. Uh, they've turned the weans against us. Okay. Graceful bird. A swan. Right, of course. Straightforward enough. Oh, nerds? Do nerds have two flavors in one box? Maybe they do. And an eligible receiver is an heir. So here we have the question mark for a bit of wordplay or punning. And this refers to someone who will be eligible to receive an inheritance or a title or something that is passed down um, through a family, through inheritance. Okay. Um, a la blank, spit roasted. Oh, not sure offhand. What about this? Black something to albatross. Black browed, maybe? Oh, so this is Super VHS, the enhanced tape format released in 1987. Okay, I don't think I'm familiar with Super VHS. Maybe I am. Oh, is that just a regular VHS, but it has more storage space? I think I actually vaguely remember that logo. Yeah, maybe, maybe I do remember that, but I certainly wouldn't have picked it out of my hat without <laughs> quite a few crosses, which is indeed what it took. Okay, so flexible cutters, wire saws, this must be. So then a black, black browed albatross, indeed. And a partner of poivre, so that is pepper in French. So sel would be the counterpart of salt. Oh, Jesus like, is that what this is? So it's describing. That's why I was confused about what this was, because describing the image make, does make this sound like an adjective. But I was thinking, what adjective would start this way? But it's Jesus like would be, would, would be how you might describe it. Okay, fair enough. And word meaning desire in a classic Sanskrit text. Oh, uh, it must be Kama, as in the Kama Sutra. And whirling tune, familiarly, is Taz, the Tasmanian devil from Looney Tunes? That's the Warner Brothers one, right? I believe so. So odor fighting spray brand is Febreze. And oh, I haven't seen this yet. Knee jerk response is a reflex. You can have your reflexes tested by hitting your knee and watching it jerk. I don't know that it ever occurred to me to connect those things. That's why your knee jerk response is your instant, almost unthinking response, because it's referring to a doctor testing the reflexes on your knee. Huh, okay, good good thing to have been made aware of, I suppose. Juice regimen and like epe vis-a-vis -vis foils. Are they bendier, perhaps? I'm not sure. Stretches out. 
um, extends, perhaps. Let's see here. Milk source, a teat. Order in a way. Order in a way. Interesting. So the in a way gives this some latitude. It means that this won't be a direct, strict synonym of order. Come blank, come on in, perhaps in those in the question in the quotation marks with the exclamation point that makes this look look and sound like a familiar phrase. So come on in, you might say. Pondered, um, roomed, ruminated, hmm. hands and slang. What about this? Relentless go getters. And what is this? Battery parts with a question mark again, right? I don't know that I pointed out the question mark last time about this one in particular. Um, could it mean battery as in assault and battery? I'm not sure. Eve's third son does look like Seth, doesn't it? And hands in slang. Oh, mitts. Keep your mitts off of me. Keep your hands off of me. Okay. Oh, mused. That's, I think that's probably the word I was trying to get to with room, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, which isn't anything, not in this context anyway. So pondered is mused. Um, battery parts. What on earth? Sorry. Uh, sorry about this. Why do I not see what it is? Relentless go-getters and juice regimen. Oh, a cleanse, a juice cleanse. There we go, there we go. And like a pave vis-a-vis -vis foils. What is this order in a way? Oh, have, I'll have, I don't know, the pasta. I'll order the pasta. Oh, heavier. Perhaps an is heavier than a foil. Okay, that's easy enough to believe. Then what was this again? A la, oh, a la brush, spit roasted. Okay, that must be correct. And relentless go-getters. Oh, tigers, perhaps. And then battery parts are tests. Why is that? Oh, a battery of tests. I see. You could be in a hospital and undergo a big series of tests, a battery of tests. There we go. <laughs> So that was the Sunday puzzle. Oh, so what? Sorry, I just realized I didn't ever notice a theme. Soft options. Um, what did I... <laughs> I don't know what I missed. Um, oh. Well, this has soft in it. S of T. Is that what it is? Oh, yeah. State... Of Tennessee, S of T. Sorry, are there more of those? Yes. Son of Tarzan. Um, sets of tongs. Oh, that's funny. Sands of time. Okay. <laughs> so this is this is abs on the um, on the sort of spectrum of uh, theme types that that we've been occasionally examining over the past several weeks. This is certainly, I would say, at the farthest end in terms of themes that do not require. Uh, to, they do not. They, they do not need to be parsed by the solver in order for the puzzle to be solved or for the theme to work. It's just there in the background, and you can notice it at your leisure. And eventually, you may or may not connect the title of the puzzle, soft options, to uh, the theme and the answers. So we had sea of tranquility, sets of things, sands of time, uh, Son of Tarzan and State of Tennessee, all S of Fs. Oh no, there are more, there are more. We had S Stars of Tomorrow, Shroud of Turin. Ah, that, that's good. So those cross each other. Shroud of Turin, that's 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 a good one. And then finally, School of Thought. Okay, so, so there, were, there, were, there were more than I thought. So in a Sunday puzzle, you, you want to get a fair number of theme answers in there to take advantage of this ridiculously enormous grid. So there we have it. Uh, a very subtle theme, I suppose I would say. I did not, um, I didn't need to notice it during the solve. And in, in fact, I didn't. I just, I, I, I forgot to even look. It was a relatively smooth solve, I think, all things considered. And so I sort of just marched through the puzzle and didn't pay particularly close attention to the theme or the seeming lack of one. But there we have it. It's S of T. Soft, soft options. Okay. Um, boy, there are quite a few of those, aren't there? I wonder how many more of those even exist. I wonder how, how many of these did Byron Walden find in the English language lexicon? I don't know. But that was that. And now we can move on. Um, we can move on to, I think, maybe just one clue 
in fact, from yesterday's puzzle. So let's, let's get on to that. And this was not so much a correction of, of something I said, but a query about a choice of clue and answer in the puzzle itself. So uh, Unimural said, uh, I'm honestly curious, is Isfahan really an ancient Persian capital? I don't even remember it being a capital in the Achaemenid or Sassanid empires. Of course, capitals for ancient empires were frequently changing and often not singular, but since Persepolis doesn't fit, I'd expect Babylon or even Istakar here. And then on the other hand, Isfahan is the early modern period. Uh, Persian capital. I did some light checking to verify that I haven't lost my mind, and I honestly think Isfahan was never a capital in the ancient era. Yeah, that made me curious as well. So I looked it up, and indeed, um, as I'm sorry, as as Unimural said, um, Isfahan was a, I want to say, 17th century um, Persian capital. So, so as this person points out, um, an early, early modern period. But uh, indeed, I also couldn't find any evidence that it was an ancient capital. So. Yeah, interesting point, and I wonder what the thinking was there. I mean, I wonder, I wonder how broad you can get with ancient. Um, there certainly are th things in legal terms that are you have phrases like "since time memorial," and uh, in some countries anyway, and refer to things that are they 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 are the way they are because that's how they've been and have not expressly been changed, and that has a very vague definition but um obviously in in things like archaeology uh, and history ancient the ancient you have specific ancient periods so yeah i don't know but it was a very good point to be to be raised so um thank you to unimural for asking that question and pointing that out i don't know the answer um who knows <laughs> anyway that's it for today i think so do uh, and that's it for the puzzle so i hope you enjoyed today's puzzle i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did, please do subscribe to the channel. I do very much appreciate that. And if you think you know somebody who might enjoy it as well, pass it along to them. Why not? And uh, I'll be back tomorrow for the Monday puzzle, a much quicker solve, certainly on a much smaller grid. So we'll, we'll cleanse the palette with that before marching back into the rest of the solving week. And I hope you join me. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care.